Hey, it's Joel, and I'm really excited to tell you about something because I had an opportunity come up and it allowed me to learn a new skill and I got to use a new program. And if I could do it, it means you can do it. So let's go through the process on how I made this. You're in 3D Printing Nerd Studios, proudly powered by PCBWay. 8% off, link in the description. You know what to do. This is a trophy for Dirtfish Rally School, and I made it. They have, as it says on the front, the Rally Sprint 2025, and it was coming up really soon, and they usually make something to give us trophies to first through third in three different categories. And I thought, well, now that we know Joel, 3D Printing Nerd could probably make something like this, right? Me being 3D Printing Nerd, and I was like, yeah, I got this. I, I have some ideas. Time was short, really, really short. What I wanted to do is utilize Shaper 3D on the iPad to create it and then print it in three different colors on the Bamboo Lab 3D printers that I have here in studio. At time of filming, these trophies will be given to the winners tomorrow. What? That's the time schedule that I'm running on right now. I'm gonna do a sketch. It's gonna be a rectangle. I'm gonna bring it out right here. Take the circle. I can then move it to the center point and then I can stab that. And if I take the circle and I make that 3.6 as well, it's now at the end. So I've got, I've got a thing, I've got a feature. So within Shaper 3D, I can exit sketching and I can select these and then it gives me some arrows and I can then extrude it. What I can do is also select some edges. And I, I love this UI. It also gives you the arrow keys. Again, this is something that I'm learning, but I think in CAD, what's really great is you get the opportunity to learn stuff really fast and, and really easily. So with a, a, a chamfer or a fillet, if you go this way, you get that, if you get that way, you get it rounded. So now uh, it's rounded. And then what I can do is tap right here and I can say sketch and it just puts a sketch right there. So now I'm gonna take a polygon and I'm gonna put it right there and I'm gonna move it. Perfect, so exit sketching. I can select this and it gives me that and I can sync that and then I can select, if I go to this polygon that I just did and I select these, there we go, that. I can just bring that out like that. Like how fun is that? Look at that. Pretty cool. So now I just I just made this, this little shape. This little shape in, in Shaper 3D. It was really cool. I was actually, I, I think I was like sitting at my kitchen table while the Mariners were on in the background and I just started sketching. If we go back here and I go to my Dirtfish trophy, look at that. It's beautiful. Using Shaper 3D, I was able to put the text on this and I can put it on a surface. Well, here, let's let's go and take a look at that sketch. Look at that. That is the sketch. My goal was for everything to exist on the build platform and then to build its way up. And that's why you see this, this place right here is set back and this exists back here. All of the features were built to be able to be built from the build platform. I didn't wanna use any support. Uh, you know, that's some forward thinking, right? In CAD, you can make your design so you don't have to use support. Uh, of, of course, if I had more time, more features, more colors, probably using support, different ways of going about things. If you look at this, the design is, I wanna call it hydraulic handbrake inspired. So if we think of rally cars, they usually have that, that hydraulic handbrake to lock up the back wheels so that they can throw the car around corners. It's a lot of fun. This is sort of inspired by the, the handbrake. Dirtfish liked it, I liked it, so I think this counts. In this sketch on Shaper 3D, I created nearly all of that, nearly all of it. So now in thinking this, my goal was to make in CAD everything that had to exist for nine trophies, because we had first through third in three categories, and three times three, according to math, is nine. Checks out. So in those nine trophies, everything that was similar, I was gonna do in the CAD program, and that's why it looks like that. But if you look here, I've got a first, rear wheel drive, BRZ. So this part right here, in here, is going to be different on all of the trophies. Within Shaper 3D, I didn't do it. Instead, I did that on the slicer. So within Bamboo Studio, 
uh, I was able to create nine build plates. And then on each of them, I brought in the Trophy STL that I exported from Shaper 3D. Using the slicer tools, I added text to each one. You can see first, second, third. At the top, it's the all-wheel drive STI category. And then for second and third for the rear wheel drive BRZ category. And at the bottom, first through third, Dirt Fish Rally Sprint 2025, first, second, third, overall. Oh, this is just, this is so cool. Within Bamboo Studio, let's just take uh, this one as an example. So if I click on this plate and then I go here to objects, that is plate four within there. So then there's the words. See, those are just text that I put onto the surface in the slicer. And I think when doing something like this, it's really important to realize that not everything has to be accomplished with the same tool. These were just then colored with white filament. The Dirtfish Rally Sprint 2025, that had white filament. The base was a black filament. And then the handbrake inspired decoration on the trophy as well as the uh, the circle mount for the text of what place and category, that was in a gray or silver filament. And I just used what I had around because that's what we had to do. I sent this to the four Bamboo Lab X1 carbons that I have. And then I was like, I'm running out of time. So I also utilized the H2D behind me. Uh, I utilized the P2S as well. Even the new H2C with the Vortec, I was able to use that from Bamboo Lab because why not? I, I just wanted to use something that was multi-material. Um, all of the Prusa XLs were busy on a different project. So this is a bamboo only project. It was PLA, but whatever I could find. I used uh, Prusament, I used Polymaker, I used eSun, I used Bamboo Lab Filament. Again, I just went and found anything I could. So there are nine in total. Let me, let me get these out because there was an issue and I got to learn from it, but take a look at the other trophies. Let me go get them. Look at these, nine trophies, but they look different. Look at them. They all look different because I had to find a bunch of different filaments. So not all the whites were the same, not all the blacks were the same. The silver, I tried to keep it the same, but that one's gray. But there's also a problem. Some of the white here, it's not thick enough. So it lets some of the black color underneath be seen. Um, that wouldn't have happened had I known some things. Also this D, doesn't look good. And it's because of the problem that I found. So these things, Dirtfish, just go get like a, a, a paint marker or whatever and just kind of color it in. You should be fine. Yeah, a lot of these scratches will buff right out. I would reprint these if I had time, but let me show you what happened. So within the Shaper 3D interface, originally what I did, this is uh, the body. It's great, body 01, fantastic. That was after I unioned everything together. Uh, you can see on the back here that there is, um, no, it's, it's all the same. So now if I do this, what I had before was a bunch of bodies in the CAD environment. And so they're all separate. They're all, they're all still separate. And doing this, when I had saved it out for Bamboo's slicer, I had forgot to union all the bodies together. So the slicer was having to do some magic tricks to make it all work together because they're intersecting bodies and it, it did its best, but it's something that, that I would have fixed had I known. Cause let me show you what happened in the slicer. So again, we're looking at the end. The D looks fine right here, but let's get closer and let's bring this down and you'll start to see. So because of the intersecting bodies, the slicer was trying to do some calculations to make it all go. So then if we're at, we're at layer 45, at layer 46, it's trying to write that D in filament essentially in a blank space above where the infill is. It just happens to be there. So it doesn't put it down correct. I tried to write it again, again, and now we start getting the white. So then there's only two layers of white. One, two, that's it. Two layers of white, and then the D here is, is never laid down correctly because it's falling down into the infill. And that was because I had, I had not unioned all of the bodies together. I still think what came out of all of this is great. One, I got to learn something. 
Two, I get to give something pretty cool to Dirtfish, who normally wouldn't give anything like this as a finishing trophy, especially nothing custom or bespoke or handbrake inspired. And, and really, this just makes me hungry to use CAD more and to solve more problems with it. I think that previous times I've used Tinkercad, I've used Onshape, I've used Fusion 360. All of those are great programs, but being able to hold something in my hand like this, and being able to take the pencil to do CAD calculations and then to use my finger to, to move stuff around and zoom way in if I need to, and that's cool. It feels powerful, and I'm excited to use it in anything tool-wise, software-wise, machine-wise that gets you inspired to create more is incredibly cool. And so I hope in showing you my path to inspiration and creation, it gets you to that point where you, you get a spark of an idea and you take it to the finish line and you learn something along the way. Because if I was to do this again, I would union the bodies and I would slice it slightly, slightly differently and I would have more time and I would, I would do all that. But again, I think what I did is good. And I think it makes me think about the future and I'm just really excited about all of that. Listen, thanks for coming along on this journey because this was incredible to say the least. And uh, I, I hope to do more of this. If you, if you like this sort of thing, let me know and I'd be more than happy to show you more CAD applications on the iPad that I can make stuff to put out here on the table. But thanks for watching. If you made it this far, you're awesome. And by watching this far, you, you're helping me pay for the license for the software. See how that works out? Yeah. Don't forget to hug each other more, fight for a cause you believe in, and cat all the things. And as always, high five.